So welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. It is first thing in the morning and we just got back from a long trip last night. What was it? 4,400 miles. Uh, we left here a little over a week ago and we went out west. In today's video we're going to talk about how the Super Duty performed on that trip. A few surprises with that and yeah. uh, we're going to give you the route that we went and show you some of the places that we saw. So this is a 23 Ford Super Duty F350. It's the Lariat and it has the 6.7 power stroke diesel. And I'm always bragging about the fuel mileage, aren't I? That's right. But um, we had high hopes going out west that we could get out there a thousand miles on a tank of fuel. Didn't happen. Didn't. And you know, around here we get 23, 24 miles a gallon, like driving down to the cabin. Our average miles per gallon on the entire trip was right at 18 miles per gallon. And the reason is, it has to be, was the wind. Yeah. On the way out, we had uh, a serious headwind. We thought Ohio and Indiana was bad until we got to Minneapolis and South Dakota and Wyoming. But the wind was just howling. We were right into it. And then I thought we would make up that difference on the way back. Wrong again. But all those storms <laughs> this past weekend, we actually had wind coming from the east. So we averaged 18 miles per gallon, uh, but the truck did really well. I mean, it... It it's, did. It's very comfortable. It's made for the open road. Yeah, riding in it, it, the seats are extremely comfortable. I think the only thing I had troubles with was the headrest somehow got tilted forward and I rode like this or my head off the side and seriously on the way home the last day of the trip I'm like you know what look that at doesn't your, feel right yeah look at it, your headrest and my headrest it's pulled out and I couldn't get it back so I googled it and here you just pull it all the way forward and it flings back to its original position oh. so I did that and then an hour later we pulled in our driveway but Aside from figuring out your headrest, the seats are very comfortable, very roomy. Um, yeah, and we did 4,400 miles, and it cost $972 in diesel fuel. I was going to ask, I was going to guess $1,000. Yeah, it was $972 in diesel. There were some states that fluctuated in fuel prices. Over a dollar. Oh my, yeah, it was incredible. You could really tell when you pulled into a different state just by looking up at the fuel sign. Yeah, but we did 10 different states uh -huh. from here all the way to Idaho and back. Right. But the truck, like I said, it is very nice to take on trips like that. We've got the Diamondback bed cover on the back. Yeah, that's Keeps really Keeps all your nice. stuff dry, dust-free. We had stuff back there. Um, that's really nice. And we had, we did meet, oh, one other thing. I only used 10 gallons of DEF fluid. I filled up before I left. I put five gallons in it, and it's about empty again. So okay. about 10 gallons of def. Now, if you're towing, it uses a lot more than that. But overall, very happy with it. I was just kind of surprised that the mileage was way worse than what I thought. Right. And plus, we were running a lot harder out there yeah. than uh, you do yeah. here. Matter of fact, we got to meet a Indiana State Trooper. Yeah, we did. Yeah, that was just uh, yesterday morning, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what happened was, you're used to running in Wyoming and South Dakota at 80 miles an hour is the speed limit, and everyone's running about 85 or 90, and uh, we got into Indiana, and that was not the case. But what happened, in my defense, uh, how did that play out? So I'm driving. And there was uh, yeah, there's a truck tr coming on. A pickup and a camper coming on. And the truck wanted... And I'm right beside a tractor trailer, just starting to pass him. Well, the tractor trailer kind of wanted to get over. So I punched it and I get ahead of him. And he pulls in behind me. And I mean, I just lift a little bit. There's a trooper. I'm like, man. And so I'm like, I'm definitely getting a ticket. I was doing like 86 miles an hour in a 70. And uh, he pulled me over and he looked like, uh, who did he look like? Jackie Gleason. He did. He looked just like Jackie Gleason. I'm like, I'm toast. I mean, this is the guy, right? He came up, got the uh, owner's card, insurance information. He was back in his car for like 15 minutes. I'm like, oh, he's just writing away, right? Came up, gave me a warning. Couldn't believe it. Yeah. Very, very, very nice. nice. But yeah, so after that, I had the crew set at 70 miles an hour all through Indiana, and it felt like we were 
parked. Coasting. Basically, just yeah, it, it was, was slow. And then, but let's start back at the beginning of the trip. Yeah. Work our way out, and then come yeah. back. So we left a little over a week ago, and we live north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we drove to La Crosse, Wisconsin. Very nice town, yeah. La Crosse. And uh, that's about an 11 and a half hour drive, I think. And we spent the night in La Crosse. Uh -huh. When we got there, it was real windy. And uh, we went for maybe like a mile and a half walk or something down. They have like a river walk and stuff. Yeah. And it just feels good to get out of the truck. You know what I mean? I don't know how them truck drivers do it. That just... river that runs right beside us is the Mississippi River. Yeah. That he's talking about. And there was a nice little park, uh, an anthem that was like... Um, amphitheater. Amphitheater. Yeah. It was like made of some big timbers to kind of look like. Yeah. So we stayed in La Crosse. The next morning we drove all the way to Wall, South Dakota. Right. Day two. Went to Wall Drug, went to the Badlands. Uh, it's a really nice area. We checked all that out, and I'm not sure what time we left. Oh, so we stayed the night in Wall. We stayed in Wall, yeah. Yeah, we stayed in Wall that night, and the next morning we left for Mount Rushmore. Now, we've been there a couple times before. Yes. But it's always worth the stop, you know, if you're in the area, and the Black Hills are just absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. So we went to Mount Rushmore, and uh, it was kind of getting later in the morning, and we wanted to get up to Deadwood yeah. and kind of to Devil's Tower. So we headed north, and this bridge is out. And uh, I was wondering why no one else was on the road that we were on, but we come to a bridge that's out. And I kind of zoom out on the screen on the GPS because there's a little road beside us, and it was paved for yeah. like 50 feet, you know? And I'm like, I wonder where that goes. And uh, I kind of zoomed out in the GPS, and you could see it went to just dots, like it was a trail. And I'm like, way over there is where we want to go. So we just pulled back this road at first, and then it turned into a trail. And we kept going downhill. Uh -huh. And what happens when you do that, as it rains, all the water, it wasn't real wet or anything. No. But all the erosion channels got worse and worse. And yeah. we were just kind of crawling along, and the Super Duty did good. Uh, but it's not made for wheeling. Really stiff, rigid suspension. One time, only once, we had it on three wheels, uh, but some serious lean. Yeah. But about four and a half miles, and we popped out onto a paved road, right kind of where we needed to go from there. Yeah. And so uh, it was a little sketch, wasn't it? It was. I don't like getting stuck. And the sound of, of wheel spinning, just not my thing. So we're getting down there and he's like, look out your window, what do you see is oh, when we were on three wheels, you okay out there? I'm like holding onto the side of my window, like looking out, I get, you know, I don't like this. <laughs> and this truck has cameras all over the place. Like you could have hit a button and seen, and I'm I like, know. cause I'm trying to see where the ruts are because we're leaning bad, you know what I mean? And she's trying to look out the window. I'm looking down on her because we're leaning so far that uh -huh. way. I'm like, stay in your seat. But we got out of there. And went to uh, Devil's Tower yeah. in Wyoming, and then uh, that's a pretty neat place. We've been it there, is. been there a couple of times before. There's people climbing, rappelling, you know. Yeah, there's climbers. people on that thing, and you don't realize how big it is until you're using binoculars and you see like a little speck up yeah. there, and it's somebody rappelling down it or yeah. climbing up it. I don't know what they're doing, uh, but all kind of old. I mean, anything from, it's a tree stump to aliens to yeah. uh, some giant bear was trying to get the Indians on top of it. Yeah. All kind of stories about Devil's Tower. In my opinion, it's a giant rock sticking up out of the ground. Yeah. I read about it before. I guess it was all erosion or I don't know. I should look into that more, but it's pretty it's cool. It's very nice. It's well cared for. Yeah, all around uh, it's real pretty. It's very, They consider it to be very sacred around the outside. And it was, uh, it was a nice visit again. Like we said, we were there before. It was nice weather. Um, wasn't too busy. Like we've been there when there's like buses unloading yeah. people. So we got to see the guys that were repelling or, you know, women, whoever climbing. We couldn't tell at first. They were actually coming down. But at first you don't know if they're trying to go right. up or coming down. So they were repelling down. And you have to register and to do that so yeah mike and i were like oh darn we didn't register yeah, so i was all ready to do that we'll do that another day then after devil's tower we it was just hammer down across wyoming yeah and uh not a lot to see for a long time 
Well, we did pull into a Sinclair. I love Sinclair gas stations. Uh, I love the dinosaur. My grandson, Ty, loves dinosaurs. So I stood beside the dinosaur, like, taking pictures. And we sent them to Levi and Kate, and the kids got to see them. Yeah. And Ty quickly was like, oh, Yaya bought me a dinosaur? I'm like, oh, no, no, no. No, we didn't just... buy you one. But we saw a guy pull in and his wife. Um, and Mike says to me, I think that's a dark horse. I'm like, I think all horses are kind of, like, either white or dark. Yeah. And uh, he went over and talked to these people in that car. It was a dark horse. Yeah, dark horse Mustang. And he was uh, from Nebraska, older gentleman. And the car was brand new, but it was all kind of grimed up. And uh, I said, I asked him about the car. And he said that he was, he had a Mustang when he was young. And he sold it to start a business. Well, he just sold his business like 30, 40 years later and bought a Mustang. And he bought it in Boise, Idaho, and they were driving him, driving it back to Nebraska. Isn't that crazy? And he had to come across the Teton Pass in the snow. I guess it was sketch. I mean, driving yeah. a, a new Mustang. But we from, I'm going to back up a minute, yeah. from Devil's Tire all the way across Wyoming. And then we met him down around Dubois. But before we met him, we came across, uh, is it Bighorn Sheep National Park or no? I'll have to look it up. It's a, it, not not national park, national forest. Mm -hmm. And uh, we came through there, lots of snow in the higher elevations. And we went down, saw the guy with the Mustang. And then after that, we uh, met a guy with a wood miser sawmill. I'm driving down the road and there's a guy running a mill right alongside the road. Yeah. And I just pulled in and introduced myself. Normally I would not do that. Super nice guy. It turns out he watches our channel, but he was sawing some Doug fir on his Woodmiser LT40, it was an older mill, and he had just finished building uh, a house. He's 77 years old, him and his wife are kind of downsizing, so I talked to Stan for probably an hour, Yeah, you know? Yeah, I went out and met him, and, and it was kind of windy. Windy, and cold. cold. I'm like, okay, I'm getting back in the truck. Yeah, and then after we met Stan, uh, we went to... He called that wood something else, though. No, that was Doug Fur. he was sawing, but they had some kind of... What he makes mantles out of, like a Russian olive or something, or, or not autumn olive, like Russian something. I don't know. Interesting. So from there, we headed to the Tetons, and we had a little, a couple little hiccups there around the Tetons yeah. because we wanted to get down to Jenny Lake, and that was one section of road that was still closed for winter. Uh, but the Tetons are just beautiful. So then we're like, we're going to head up to West Yellowstone. And I knew some of the roads were going to be closed, but the main drag from the Tetons to Yellowstone uh, was closed. I guess just feet and feet of snow still. And we talked to a guy from the park, and he's like, oh, yeah, you can just run over to Driggs and up that way. I was like, okay. And I know that route, but it's like four hours. Yeah. For them out there, it's like a drive like, down yeah. the street. So we stayed in Jackson. Yeah, which is very nice. Jackson Hole is very nice. And they had like some... Reduce rates because we had a nice room yeah. for like 125 bucks off season i guess because it's off season or something but it wasn't bad had an expensive dinner our dinner was some sandwiches that were like 60 bucks i'm like wow yeah so the next morning we went across the teton pass uh which is just beautiful and that's on the south end of the tetons over to driggs idaho and then we went up through island park idaho yeah into west yellowstone and while in West Yellowstone, I bought something. Melissa was going to go shopping. I went to a, a shirt. Uh, you know, it's, they had the signs, you know, like five T-shirts for $5. Those never seemed to work out. But I was looking for some shirts and sweatshirts. And yeah. the ones that weren't five for $5 were very expensive. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not sure I want to spend the money on this right now. We'll find another place. It's the first one I walked into. And he's a few doors down at this camera shop. So I walk in, and he's got this big box in front of him. I bought a lens for the Sony a7. That's a camera I recently bought. And I've wanted one for a long time. And this camera shop in Yellowstone, the guy is super knowledgeable. He does, uh, like, photo tours where he'll take people out, teach his photography. He has some online classes for beginners. I think I'm going to take one. But I bought a 200 to 600 millimeter lens. It's ginormous, but it's awesome for 
uh, wildlife, and that's kind of what I, I have been after. And uh, so we bought the lens. It was expensive. It was. I wasn't planning on buying one at the time, but I thought we're going into Yellowstone right now. I might as well pull the trigger on it. So she walks in. I'm standing there at this big box. I told the guy, I said, hey, thanks for selling this to me for like a hundred bucks. And uh, she just kind of gave me the look. And then from there. Well, I really didn't know how much it was. So I'm like, what do you mean? And he says the price of this lens. And I'm like, wait, are you serious? I didn't pricey. know. You, you buy a lens and get a free kidney. It's it's incredible. Yeah. I did get some nice pictures in Yellowstone with yeah. it. Yeah. So we went through Yellowstone. Uh, it spent was the nice. whole... We got in there and there was bison. We saw some They were coyotes. everywhere. Yeah. No bear, no elk. Uh, no. But until we got to Gardner. At the end, yeah. Gardner, there was elk everywhere. Had a nice uh, dinner in Gardner. Then from there, we went to Livingston, which yeah. is a really cool town. Livingston, yeah. Montana. Spent the night there. And then we started working our way back after that. But that was basically the trip. And uh, day one on the way back, where did we make it to? In South Dakota. Oh. Chamberlain or something, yeah. South Dakota. Yeah. And then from there to Chicago, day two on the way back was horrible. Yeah. It was uh, rain oh, the yeah. entire trip until uh, it was well we stayed in elkhart indiana so we drove from like chamberlain south dakota to elkhart about 800 miles in one day a little over 800 miles and it rained the whole way to chicago 90 percent of the trip and uh then from elkhart we ran it on home the next day but i am impressed with one thing and i have to toot my own horn i didn't think i could hang anymore like as far as yeah driving i drove the whole trip and uh he did good. It wasn't bad. Got a little grumpy in all that rain. I mean, that rain, I got to the point where I was like, gee whiz, I'm tired of seeing it. And just I'm all the wash see, off you know? of the trucks and stuff. And, you know, yeah. you're in it for eight, nine hours straight. And uh, on the way out, we'll just leave you with this. Before we left, everyone in the family had like some kind of crud, head and chest stuff. We both dodged the bullet until... We're yeah. on our way out, and we both get a cough, sore throat, all that. Goodness. Nothing horrible, and then uh, it was just getting over it, and then we pull in here, and there is pollen just piling up on yeah. everything. I mean, so we're all kind of There's a... a layer of it. Yeah, but what a difference in the leaves. Oh, and yeah, and everything's so green. There's so many trees here. It's, it's, it's so different. Like, out there, it's wide open, and lots of sky, not a lot of trees. Not a lot of hills. Gee whiz, even Ohio. Ohio is so flat. Yeah. And just, yeah. So I will say this. Kind of protected. So, trees. my favorite states, I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful out there. It is. Uh, and Idaho is, is probably my, definitely in the top three of my favorite states. But West Virginia is hard to beat. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? With the, the, the mountains. The mountains, the climate, the greens, the wildlife, and everything's just more concentrated. Like mm -hmm. out west, you know, you could have 100 acres and you could look at it and be like, there's 100 acres. Right. In West Virginia, you could explore that 100 acres for two days. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything's just like concentrated. But but with your new camera lens, you could yeah. all be like... I'm going to be hearing about the camera wow. lens. Wow. But I like... It's, it, I love visiting out there and seeing all this stuff. It is nice. And I like to uh, meet people that do things, kind of the same kind of stuff we do, but a little bit different. We met a husband and a wife in Yellowstone. They were from Switzerland. She's a dietitian, and he's a carpenter, a furniture builder. So we talked about wood. We met Stan. Uh, I met a couple guys with a bunch of dogs in the back of their truck. They have, like, these dog boxes. They hunt mountain lions. And it's neat when you see people in other places because I try to learn from them. Everybody does things different in different areas. And, you know, I think sometimes we all look at somebody doing something and think, oh, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why are they doing that? Right. There's probably a reason for it. If they're from that area and it's something that they've been doing for a long time, I guarantee you there's a reason for it. And when it comes to stuff like that, they're smarter than I am. So I want to learn and understand why. But we looked at just all the different types of home construction and just everything. It's neat seeing how people do things in different parts of the country. Yeah, we listened to a lot of podcasts on the way out and the way back. Yeah, I listened to a lot of podcasts. Uh, one of them had 
micro. Yeah, listen. Dirty jobs. Yeah, it was a good oh. podcast. Tucker Carlson had Mike Rowe on. Mike Rowe does a great interview. He does. He was an opera singer. He had that show, Dirty Jobs. It's, you know, and how can you not like him? Like, yeah. he, uh, he went about all sorts of different jobs and showed, I guess, the dirty sides of them, you could say, and how anybody can learn a trade. And, uh, yeah. Yep. Talked about that. It was a good one. But I think uh, that's a recap of the trip. We are ready to hit the ground running now that we're back home. We've we got are. a bunch of stuff to do. I'm good on a trip for four or five days, and I'm ready to do something. Yeah, you know I have to I mean? say, the trip out is always fun. The trip back, the road back is just always, he's, he's done for. Like, i got to get home. Yeah. i got to do something. He's ready. So. Tie to ride in the truck. But I think that's about it for today's video. Yeah. Uh, we had a good trip. We're glad to be home. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks.